Hi all, my name is Mark Dennis and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about gear acquisition. Uh, it is that time of the year when uh, my insurance premium is due for all my equipment and uh, over the last week or two I have been having a look at some of the gear we have here and indeed working out why I have so much of it. And I am going to talk to you a little bit about how you can avoid some of the costs that I've probably incurred over the years and um, if I was going to start up a new business or indeed if I could have turned the uh, clock back I would probably do things a little bit differently. Okay well first off let's talk about cameras. Um, we are Nikon based here and uh, Nikon in the early days simply had DX sized or APS-C sized chips in their cameras which was great uh, to an extent um, you know in the very very early days that's what we had I came from a Nikon film background, so I had lenses that would work on the digital bodies. And so we went down that route. Uh, then came the day when Canon came out with the Mighty 5D and it was full frame. So uh, that was very useful specifically because I was shooting a lot of weddings at that time. So I jumped ship over to Canon and bought myself a couple of 5Ds. Brilliant. I started to get those lovely backgrounds all nice and blurry, which was relatively hard to achieve with the uh, Nikon crop sensor bodies. And then of course, da da, out came the D3. Nikon came back with full frame camera and I jumped ship back to Nikon. Um, and so I've been with Nikon again ever since, which has again been fine, but probably in all that time I have spent quite a bit of money and probably if I'd have stuck with Nikon and not jump ship to Canon, I could have saved myself a lot of money from changing systems. So uh, that was very expensive because it's not only lenses, it's also flash guns and all the other rigmarole and paraphernal software and other stuff that goes with it. So yeah, first thing I would say, think very, very long and hard about what system you want to get and whatever you decide to do, uh, try and stick with it wherever you can. Um, the other thing I would really be careful of is uh, spending lots of money on lenses. Um, I've spent an awful lot of money over my career so far on lenses. Uh, some of them good choices, some of them not. Um, if I was starting a game, I would go and get myself a good quality standard zoom, either a 24-70 to 70 or a, uh, I don't know, 16-80 to 80 for a crop sensor or something like that, but get a nice fast one of those because that is one lens that you will be using day to day and that is a great, great, great thing to spend money on and you will not be disappointed. The other thing I would probably do is get something similar, maybe a 70 to 200. Again, a very staple sort of lens that you will use an awful lot. Get the best one you can afford um, and you will find that that will be a good standby for your years in photography. Brilliant. Then you've got the option of obviously getting a wide. Um, if you're doing interiors a lot to get yourself a good quality wide, you're good to go. Uh, but I would certainly go down that route of buying the standard zoom first, then the slightly telephoto zoom, and then go for your wide, depending, of course, whether you're going to be doing a lot of interior work. Um, thereafter, your lens choices take on a different turn. You could go and get yourself, if you're into portraiture, a 200 f2, and I've actually had a 200 f2 until about a month ago, and I've actually sold mine mainly because um, it simply wasn't being used enough. Uh, I think in the UK now they're just retailing for under £5,000, which is an awful lot of money to have sat in a lens that isn't earning you a huge amount of money. It is without doubt the most sublime lens I think I've ever used, but it simply wasn't being used enough. Um, and in my studio that I have here at the moment, uh, believe it or not, the 200 f2 is just a little bit too long and I could do with something a little bit smaller. So. Working out what I'd have to insure that lens for every year, because um, it's got to be itemised as well with my insurance company because it's such an expensive lens. Uh, and indeed the bulk of the lens and, and the usage, I've decided to, uh, to part company with it. And I will probably pick myself up a 105 Nikon 1.4 or maybe the Sigma um, 135 1.8, something along those lines. Considerably cheaper and will probably be used a whole lot more. Um, I do a bit of portraiture here, so it's worth my while having a lens like that. Uh, but one thing I can tell you with, um, with lenses is that you tend to buy expensive and sell cheaper. You will always lose money if you sell them. Um, lenses that I've kept, obviously, have earned me money, 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 money. And that goes back to the standard sort of zoom, the telephoto zoom, and I used to do a little bit of interior work wide. 
Um, those sort of lenses are really, really worth having, and a good portraiture lens, if you're doing that sort of work, is obviously worth having. You're going to be using that a lot. But other lenses now, if we're make, starting again, I would have just hired. I would have hired stuff and had a look. And in fact, that's in exactly what I intend to do with the portrait lens I'm going to buy. That will replace my 200 f2. I will be having a look at, the, say, the Sigma and the Nikon um, telephoto lenses, portrait telephoto lenses. And I'm going to hire both of them and run them side by side. Um, so just food for thought. Um, if I was, uh, say, starting again, this is how I would do things. And uh, I'd have a hell of a lot less to ensure, which is what this video really is all about. Um, but yeah, camera bodies come and go, and people change cameras for lots and lots of reasons, uh, you know, because they think it's going to be better, because they think they're going to achieve more. Um, in my experience, that hasn't always been the case. I could have probably cut out uh, incremental changes in, in gear, because um, it, it never gets the money back in. And my clients don't notice the difference whether I was shooting, for instance, on a D800 or a D810. I don't think my clients are going to see that. Um, but of course, I bought the D810 to upgrade from the D800. And was it a smart move? Probably for what I do, no. Um, I could have saved myself probably from, in terms of the upgrade price, maybe £900. And that's a holiday. That's a photographic trip. That's, uh, I don't know, that's, that's a, a, a good time out with your family. Um, sometimes those things are more important. And, and seeing as my customers would never have seen the difference uh, I was probably foolish to do so. Tripods are uh, another one. Um, these little desktop jobs, obviously very, very cheap and incredibly useful. So I've got a few of these guys and sometimes these come free with uh, cameras. So yeah, cheap chips um, and kind of in terms of insurance, obviously a bit irrelevant. I mean, I lose these things all the time for a pastime practically. Um, but yeah, these, these uh, are great little useful devices, but bigger tripods, I've had quite a few. And um, I've done a little bit of a video, I think, on one of my main tripods I use. And uh, my advice would be just get a decent tripod. Get the tripod you want that can take your long lenses, can take a small camera, can take anything you likely to put on the top of it. Um, and uh, say maybe have two. I mean, I have two now, predominantly. I have a big Manfrotto aluminium, 028 I think it might be. Anyway, that's kind of an old fashioned one. They're really geared centre column and uh, that is brilliant in the studio. I mean, you, you can't knock it over. You can put wheels on it. You can do all sorts of stuff. Great for video, great for stills, and it can go unbelievably high. And then I have a smaller, much lighter carbon fiber um, Gitso one, which is just sublime. Uh, so yeah, I can strongly recommend if it were me again, instead of having four or five different tripods, which is what I used to have, I now have just really two, and I have some of these little small jobbies as well. But that would save you an awful lot of money. Um, lighting is another one. I mean, in fact, lighting is quite a tricky one to sort of evaluate. Um, over the last, oh gosh, I don't know, 30 years of my career, I think I have changed my lighting probably four times. So, uh, yeah, it's gone from sort of the old quad packs with these great big cables and really bulky stuff to cart around through to the monoblocks, um, through to the lightweight monoblocks, and now to the Godox stuff. Uh, and the reason really for changing to this has been because the technology has changed. It's now battery operated, which is superb. And for me, I love not having cables. I find cables a pain in the butt. And I find that these guys, or indeed any battery operated light, um, absolutely sent from heaven. So yeah, lighting, not too bad. I mean, I get my money's worth out of it when it gets shabby and it gets old, or technology moves on with that, I replace it. Um, but I have no view to replace this stuff. Uh, this Godox stuff anytime soon. I think it's brilliant. So really to sort of recap, I mean, my advice to you um, and what this whole exercise has shown to me, uh, really the insurance and everything else, is to really be very, very careful what you buy. Camera bodies come and go, okay? Lenses keep their value much better, but buy the lenses that you really are going to need. One thing you do know, which is 
going to happen with technology is that over a period of time it will depreciate whatever you buy whatever you buy so you've got to get maximum bang for the buck out of that bit of equipment that you purchase um, the same can be applied obviously with computers etc until you really have to upgrade them don't i would just say look around only buy what you really really need to go and buy hire if something if you're going to use it just once or twice a year um, and good luck i um, i hope this video would have saved you a little bit of money um, I will leave any relevant links that I can think of down there and uh, many thanks for watching.